realize their significance. That's a headgear worn by Nigerian women in those elaborate fabrics and designs. They're actually quite tricky to do. So one enterprising Nigerian man has created quite a successful business by fashioning and styling headgear for women around the world. Sorry. We're going to do a transformation from this into the Vava Voom. Preparations for a traditional Nigerian engagement ceremony. Customs handed down from generation to generation. But this ritual has a modern edge to it. It has to do with this head wrap or gile, which has become a fashionable part of the Nigerian woman's wardrobe. And as you can see, this is pretty much most of the brides. This is what they use. The rise in the gile is in part due to this man, Shagan Gile, who made it his business to shape head wraps for Nigerian women. His work has become so popular by word of mouth that he makes his living traveling through the United States, Canada, and Nigeria, styling gile and applying makeup for brides. It's a special touch. I can't do mine for my wedding. It can be as perfect as a bridal headgear. Being able to do the head wrap, you know, it comes with the form, the, form, the dimension and everything. It's an art and um, the act of tying the head wrap is actually an art. So I'm an artist. You know, some people are quite conservative. Some people are the kind of people that they want to be noticed. And some are just, you know what, I'm just in between. The way they wear head wraps in Nigeria is the conservative style. It's small, cute, elegant, but here in America, they say everything in Texas is big, so they are head the bigger the better. I'm going to make this as flamboyant as possible. Shegangile is based out of Houston, Texas. He moved to the U.S. in 2003, and this small studio is in a way his global operations center. His business surfaced out of an innocent offer of help for a woman he saw in a parking lot before a friend's wedding. You know, I, I had to approach her, I'm like, can I help you do your head wrap? And she was like, oh no, it's okay, I'll get someone else to do it. I was like, I need to do your head wrap for you. She was like, okay, if you do it and I like it, I'll give you $7. That day I made $265. Yay! This is hard. It became the only job he would have in the U.S., which now earns him as much as $60,000 a year. If I do weddings within Houston, I normally charge, I think, about $650, $650 for a one-day event. But when I go out of town, it's $1,000, and they pay for my flights, my hotel accommodation. I have been flying every weekend from April, and I'm still going to be flying. I've been in Atlanta. I have been in Maryland. I have been in Boston, I have been in Philadelphia, I have been in New Jersey for weddings, I have been in California. It's too low on her face and it is covering too much of the ears, you know, so this makes a whole lot of difference. His fame comes from his design, an art form that he now shares with students in the U.S. and London. Always, no matter who you are, if you're a Nigerian in Houston, um, when you say Shegun Gile, people know that name for that reason because of what he's done in the industry. I can't, I can't um, explain um, after finishing with Shegun, um, my business boomed, boomed beyond my own imagination. The Gile has been around for generations, but it's only in recent years that women have made it such a fashion statement. I booked him last year yeah. so I can have availability because <laughs> people book him so fast and he gets booked easily. You know, his schedule is always tight, so I have to book him ahead of time and make a deposit just to hold the date. That can only mean good things for this artist. This is how she's going to go in. And a business that's sure to grow. Let's take a look at Shagun Gile's talent by numbers. Now, it only takes him three to five minutes to wrap one of those head pieces. His students take double or triple the time. You can get them in any fabric, including paper, and they'll cost you between $40 and $120 each. Now, up next, we're going to meet a very enterprising billionaire who has high hopes for one embattled African nation. After the break, we're going to find out which African country Bob Johnson believes will be the next tourist hotspot.